record here. And um, I'm going to uh, forward our slide here and just talk briefly about what we're going to cover today. And then I'm going to hand the floor over to Kim Scalzo here for, for a little bit. But we're going to do just a, a welcome and a broad overview of the initiative with Kim here. And then we'll uh, jump in with some introductions uh, for all of you in attendance today. We'll discuss some faculty practices and expectations for SUNY online faculty. And then we'll dive into how uh, we can support our faculty um, to achieve those practices and talk about the supports in place and professional development that we have in place, as well as the community practice we're building up to support um, this initiative. And finally, we'll shift over into what student supports we have, and we'll be joined by a member of the uh, team that focuses on um, student supports, and I think that would be Larry Dugan later today. And finally, we'll just end with uh, some information about the upcoming faculty fo focus forums. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kim. Thanks for joining us today, Kim. Thanks, Jamie. Can everybody hear me okay? Great. Okay. So, um, Jamie, I do have some slides. So, uh, yeah, great. Okay, good. Um, and this is gonna, um, I have two screens, so I gotta do a little bit of swapping here. Give me a second. All right, how does that look? I was muted. Uh, that looks great. We see yeah. your slide. Right, good, good. Um, all right, so, and it's great to see everybody. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Kim Scalzo. I'm the executive director for SUNY Online and um, uh, have been uh, here at SUNY System Admin for about 12 years now, um, initially at the Center for Professional Development where Jamie is, but um, I've been with um, uh, leading the online initiatives at SUNY since about 2015. So, um, so what I wanted to do today was just kind of do some level setting, set the stage and let you know what this Degrees at Scale initiative is and how it fits in with the broader picture of online learning at SUNY. Uh, so um, to start that off, I'm going to um, just talk a little bit about when we say SUNY online education, um, what scope is that? What does that encompass? And um, really, um, this is really about how SUNY extends its educational opportunities to serve more students via online. Um, and we do that in really kind of two areas of focus uh, um, uh, for what we do here at the system level. The first is what you're probably mostly familiar with, which is since 1994, actually, um, and up till still today, we do a lot to support campus online education initiatives. And we do that with a variety of um, services uh, that encompass um, lead generation. We provide a lot of uh, exemplary models and uh, resources um, in the areas um, of online learning, so best practices. Um, we do provide some direct services to campuses, things like our help desk and um, LMS administration services. We do a fair bit of advocacy with the legislature and with state and national accrediting agencies. And we also engage in research and innovation uh, to you know, kind of um, help advance the field of online learning. So in that regard, those services and the staff associated with those services are funded through fees that we um, uh, get from campuses who opt into our services. And we also have an allocation from um, uh, the system office here through some UI funding. And those in that area, we're serving all 64 campuses. So any of you that are teaching online, can um, you and your campuses can benefit from those services. Since 2019, um, we have been engaged in another area of work uh, um, up to this point called SUNY Online Degrees at Scale. And that is really a system level initiative to help uh, um, address really the enrollment uh, um, issues that we've had at SUNY, the declining enrollments. And what we, we uh, kind of put out there is that if we could take a small number of programs and really take them to scale, we can make a big dent in that enrollment challenge. So, uh, and we know that there's a market out there of online learners to be served. So we're doing this with a very different approach to online learning, which includes um, a small set of programs, which we call SUNY Online Signature Programs. They are organized into market-driven pathways of programs from um, uh, associates levels up to doctoral um, level uh, programs. Um, and I'll show you what those look like in a few minutes. 
Um, we're taking a very different approach to promotion and recruitment so that we are focused on attracting 100% adult online learners, which is very different from the students that we typically attract to SUNY campuses. Um, we are looking at different models for both program and course design at scale. So what does it mean if we enroll a thousand students in a program? Uh, we are taking very different approaches to student support. So we have um, success coaching um, to help students be successful. We uh, um, are taking a slightly different approach to instructional design support. Uh, and we also have a, what we call our central IT stack, a set of IT solutions here at the system level that are supporting the students and the faculty and the courses engaged in this initiative. And of course, evaluation and assessment is something that we are doing throughout um, to make sure that we are um, un, um, assessing what we're doing so that we can improve and, um, and make sure that what we're doing is of quality. So this initiative has been initially funded by system admin, but we are moving to an annual cost recovery model via campus fees. This initiative to date has nine campuses engaged in it. Um, and, uh, and so it's a subset, really. The way to think about this is it's a subset of everything we do um, uh, online. Okay. Um, and I don't see anybody's video, and I don't know if that's because everybody has their video off, but I'm just saying that I'm not seeing anybody um, on my screen. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, so Jamie, um, and I also don't see the chat when I'm presenting. So if there are any questions, feel free to interrupt me, okay? Thank you. Okay. All right. So in, in that area where we're supporting all SUNY campuses, this is the range of services that we provide. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, uh, you can go to our website if you're not familiar with the services that we provide. But these are basically services we make available to all campuses. Um, and, uh, and again, really with that goal of supporting campus online learning initiatives. Um, if you're not familiar with our scope and scale of online at SUNY, um, we are offering um, about 650 online degree and certificate programs across the system. Um, we are doing about 26,000 course sections online annually. That's pre-COVID, of course, because that's the last complete year that we have. Um, and um, as of fall 2019, iPads data, we had a little over 27,000 students who, or well, actually almost 27,500 students who were completing their courses 100% online, meaning they were taking all of their courses online. And, and pre-COVID, about 15% of our faculty were teaching one or more courses online per year. So that just gives you a sense of um, uh, you know, the scale across SUNY. Of course, um, in the last year and a half, we've had all faculty teaching online and all students taking some form of online education, um, but this is you know, kind of what we looked like pre-COVID. We also know that in New York State, we have about 53,000 students, a little over that, who are enrolling in other um, institutions from out-of-state providers for um, uh, both undergrad and grad programs or courses. Um, that, and we know um, what institutions they're going to. And so we know a lot of those institutions are institutions that primarily serve um, adult learners and 100% online learners. So that's a huge market of students that we're not serving in SUNY that we'd like to serve more. Um, it, similarly, we have about 25,000 New York State residents who are enrolled in competitor institutions within the state for undergrad and grad programs. So there's a big chunk of students in the state who are enrolling online at institutions outside of SUNY. And we really feel like we could be serving that market um, in much higher numbers. And this is an area that we are targeting to try and address some of those enrollment declines that our campuses have been seeing. So that's where the SUNY Online Degrees at Scale initiative came from. Um, it's really about increasing the number of 100% online learners at our campuses. Um, we're targeting post-traditional learners uh, who, um, uh, you know, maybe they didn't go from high school to college or maybe they got one degree and um, they're interested in another one, or maybe they started a degree and they didn't come back and finish. So there's a whole audience of students out there that we'd like to be able to serve in our state, but also I didn't even talk about the out of state and the international market. We are targeting a small number of programs. We think we can get to scale um, and scale on the order of a thousand students or more. 
Um, we are looking at ways that we can work with partners to um, uh, respond to, to those market opportunities and whether they be employers or vendors or other kinds of partners, um, that's, a, that's uh, an opportunity for us. We are looking at where we need courses and programs to fill the gaps of existing SUNY-wide offerings. We know that some of those online providers, for example, are providing online programs in areas where we do not have programs online, so we're looking to add those. And it's really about bringing back those 53,000 New York residents, or as many of them as we can anyway, who are going to um, um, other uh, non-New York institutions. These are the four strategies that we outlined for how we think we can achieve scale. So um, again, it's really thinking about the programs that we're offering and being strategic about um, where we know there are high demand uh, for projected job needs or for student interest. We are looking at how we organize our programs into pathways so that if we're serving um, a particular area, we can serve anybody in that field. Um, and also how can we leverage micro-credentials, non-credit programs, et cetera, that can stack into those degree programs. We've made a significant investment in marketing and recruitment, and that includes a whole redesign of the recruitment funnel and um, strategies that we, can, um, that we have been employing to capture more of the market share of those adult learners. Um, I mentioned partnerships and we're looking at partnerships in a variety of areas uh, to help us um, both enroll students and um, be more competitive in the way that we deliver programs and support students. And then we're looking at what we need to do from a retention perspective in terms of student and faculty supports so that as we scale, we do so with quality. So these are those kind of um, high level areas of strategies that we've been working on. What does that look like? So from the program perspective, these are those program pathways. So today we actually have, um, I think there's 11 um, pathways, curricular areas where we've identified programs from the associates level to the master's level. We are looking at um, where we have opportunities with the EOCs through SUNY's online training center to uh, be feeders into our associates programs. And across the bottom, that blue bar means that we're looking for non-credit programs and micro-credentials that can stack in between the degree programs. So um, uh, the idea is that um, these programs represent entry points into SUNY. So you could, if, if you're you know, someone who um, you know, um, uh, is just coming out of high school or maybe you know, college, you didn't go right from high school to college, you've been out of the out of the education space, maybe starting at an EOC makes sense for you or starting at a community college. If you already have a, um, some credits or an associate's degree, maybe starting at the bachelor's or bachelor's com completion level makes sense. If you already have a bachelor's degree, then we have master's options. And you can see that we have a lot of these programs filled in, but there are areas where we need additional programs and we will be looking to identify additional programs in the coming year. So these are the, those pathways um, that I mentioned for the Degrees at Scale initiative. Um, I mentioned that we've done a whole lot in the way of promotion and advertising, and this gives you a sense of some of the ads that we've been, um, uh, that we've been um, uh, placing in social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. Um, so uh, really targeting those adult learners, messaging about affordability, messaging about SUNY as an accredited institution, um, and really trying to capture that adult market in a way that we actually have not done previously at SUNY. So hopefully you're seeing some of these ads and they're resonating with you. I mentioned the um, student supports is a very different model. So we have a team of success coaches here at the system level that um, are in place to really support students to monitor how they're doing and proactively identify where those students might be running into barriers and helping to remove them. The coaches work really closely with our campuses so they're not in place of the campuses, but it's really about helping to scale um, the support for the students and making sure that students are connecting with the resources they need and getting support from the campus where they need that. Uh, on the um, uh, course and program side, we um, have shared some models with our campuses. Hopefully that you've seen some of this for program and course design at scale. Uh, and the idea is that we're looking to do more seven and eight week accelerated courses to allow 
um, students to be able to start their program five to six times per year, as opposed to maybe just in the fall. Um, we've been doing some work at looking at what are some of the um, some other instructional models for achieving scale at the course level. Um, we are providing instructional design support here at the system level collaboratively with instructional designers on the campus, and I know that you're going to hear a little bit more about that. All of the courses in this initiative are being delivered in the SUNY Online LMS, which is an instance here at the system level, all using a common template, which was designed by the instructional designers across the campuses who are engaged. Uh, all of the courses go through a review with our course quality review rubric, which we call OSCAR, and I know you're going to hear more about that. Um, and there is an ongoing uh, course refresh cycle uh, for each of the courses. Uh, so um, uh, this is what we say when, when we talk about the support for program and course design at scale. This is just a snapshot of where we are with the Degrees at Scale initiative. Um, nine campuses, 22 programs. Um, uh, we're actually adding five more programs this fall. Uh, and um, we are continuing to refine that recruitment funnel. Um, you'll, you're going to get these slides, so you'll, you'll have some of this data, but we've delivered a lot of courses in the LMS. Um, uh, we have more campuses offering those accelerated courses and five to six starts per year. We have a partnership with the U.S. Naval Community College um, where um, we were able to bring in um, almost 130 students this past spring. Um, and I mentioned that we're um, uh, launching five new programs this fall. So um, I know that was really quick, but I wanted to just give you a little bit of a sense of the um, Degrees at Scale initiative, what the signature programs are and how that fits into the bigger picture of what we're doing online. So um, Jamie, I'm gonna stop there and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you for that, Kim. I think it's nice for us to get a good sense of, of the initiative that we're working in and the benefits to our students and, and the SUNY system as a whole and each individual campus as well. Do we have any questions for Kim? I'm waiting for that awkward pause. You know, sometimes we have to do that to get our students to ask those questions in class. Okay, if not, then if it's all right, Kim, I'm gonna move forward. Can everybody see my uh, screen share? Can I, can I just ask one question, Jamie? Sure. I'm just curious to know of what I talked about. Um, if everyone could just um, respond in the chat, how much of that was new for you versus how much of it did you already know? Was it mostly new or you knew it already or half and half, or I'm just curious to know. That's good to know. Okay, good. Mostly new. Good. Okay. That's good. I think that was the point of the orientation. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Well, I hope it was helpful. And, you know, this is not the only chance to ask questions. Um, you're going to have more time in the session and, uh, and we're not going anywhere. So um, if you have other questions, please don't hesitate to let us know. All right. Okay. I'm just going to kind of go on mute for a little bit, Jamie, and then I will have to drop off. Oh, that's fine. Thanks for joining us today, Kim. Okay, so now we've given you a little bit of a peek into the an overview of what SUNY Online is. Now we want to get a peek at who you all are. So we're going to do an icebreaker, and I know that makes some people groan, right? It's like, oh, it's the worst. And but uh, just you know, just bear with me, and and we'll try to work our way through. I am a giant fan of the polling service called Mentimeter.com. And uh, as part of it, I can have you aim your camera at the screen, open up your, uh, the camera app, and if you aim it at this QR code on your screen, it should pull up this poll for you and you can participate on your phone. If not, uh, you can always go to www.menti.com and you can use the code 53875165. And I'll put that into the, the chat here. I think it's uh, better to participate on, on the phone because then you don't lose your computer screen, but if you have two monitors, you can certainly do that. And so what I'd like you to do, if you would, is introduce yourselves. And when you do, please include your name, also your uh, preferred pronouns and what campus you're from. 
And then it's a kind of a little quiz, but it's okay to get the answer wrong. Who's your primary uh, SUNY Online campus contact? Who's the person that if you have a question about SUNY Online anything, who do you go to? And as people respond to this, we'll see it pop up on the screen here uh, with the, um, with the uh, question here. Okay, Heather Bennett, thank you. Uh, you're with ESC. And you think that the SUNY Online contact is not for you. Do you teach a SUNY Online uh, signature degrees at scale course? Heather, you can put that in chat if you want, or you can unmute yourself. Or you're an instructional designer. I just see it in your title there. That might be why. <laughs> Sorry, I should have clarified. I'm that's one of the okay. Studio IDs. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So we have Amelia in from SUNY Plattsburgh. Okay, nice. So you know your your primary source, Cheryl, um, and you have several contacts. It's good. I, so far, I'm seeing that for those of you who are posting that you do know who to reach out to, that's great. That means that the campus coordinators are doing their job and communicating to you uh, who you should be doing your outreach to. Salim uh, from FLCC and great, you know your contact as well. Wonderful. Okay, I'll wait just another minute to see if anybody else is going to post. If not, if you're hesitant to participate in the poll this way, you know, feel free to pop it in the chat. This I just like to um, switch things up a little bit. Okay, so next, let's move on to the next kind of icebreaker question is, what is one thing that you're really excited about teaching a SUNY online course? Um, what's something that you're looking forward to? What's something that you're intrigued by, et cetera, about teaching your course this semester? Nobody's excited. <laughs> okay, there we go. Collaboration. Great. Anybody else? It's okay. If this falls flat, it's all right. This, we do this in our own classroom sometimes, right? We think something is going to be fantastic, and then we get the old Debbie Downer, wah, wah, and that's okay too. Okay, so if you don't want, we'll move on to the next one. And I kind of like this one. This is, how are you feeling about the upcoming semester? And you can choose from any one of these quadrants. So quadrant A is you're angry, you're annoyed, you're anxious. Quadrant B is you're happy, you're excited or pleased. C is you're sleepy in this cat. That sleepy is my absolute favorite that like he feels like who I am inside bored or sad, and then D, we have calm, peaceful, and relaxed. So if you don't want to vote on Menti, please feel free to vote in the chat for which, uh, which cat best represents you uh, for the upcoming semester, A, B, C, or D. B, well, that's good. Uh, we've got two votes for uh, happy, excited, or pleased. One for calm, peaceful, and relaxed, that's, that's great. We, they're more towards the positive aspect of the, the scale and not necessarily the, the more uh, negative emotion side of the scale. Great. That's good. If you had asked me last week, I was definitely the, the sleepy or bamboozled cat there. I'm definitely moving more towards B or D myself. Okay, great. Thanks very much for participating there. 
So let's uh, pop in here and we're going to talk about some faculty practices and the faculty practices we're going to discuss in terms of uh, the SUNY online aren't going to vary too much from what you already experience as a faculty member. Um, so bear with me as we talk about the one thing that you will see that might be a little bit different for you is the use of the SUNY online template. And the template is basically an accepted set of practices and standards for the initiatives course design. And it's, uh, it organizes the content in your courses into an accessible format. It improves navigation. It increases uh, usability for the student as well as for the, the faculty member and it increases uh, learner satisfaction. And all of this is part of the overall initiative uh, for SUNY Online. As Kim mentioned, the, the template was uh, kind of designed by instructional designers, faculty members with uh, usability in mind. And usability in terms of, of education is kind of like this Venn diagram. It's an overlap between what we typically think of usability is, which is a uh, web or web experience or how websites laid out and how usable it is uh, for the projected users. And then for pedagogical usability, which is the content of the course, the learning outcomes and the assessment. And what we want for uh, pedagogical usability is uh, both how the information is laid out in the digital format and how the content is laid out so that the student can uh, navigate the course and kind of digest the, the learning materials. We know that the usability of the course uh, has a huge impact on student satisfaction, as well as with overall uh, course uh, success and satisfaction. So we want to make sure that our courses are, are usable, and therefore we've kind of put a framework for that uh, usability by using the online temp template. And sometimes we hear from faculty that they uh, they miss the freedom of being able to make some adjustments to the template, but we hope that the, the kind of counter to that, that the benefit for students of the ease of navigability, the, the kind of decrease in the cognitive load that they experience when they're moving from one course to the next makes uh, faculty understand why the template is important. So if you have a student who has five online courses and they're moving from course to course and they're not using a template, they're spending a lot of time trying to figure out where stuff is. The template makes it so that students can move seamlessly from course to course, not worrying about the layout, only worrying about the content, the, the, the learning materials, which is where we wanna get students. So uh, for that reason alone, uh, that's why the template's in place. I have, uh, I'll be sharing the presentation with you at the end today, so you can click into any of the links here, but I've, I've linked a really great chapter on usability and course design. If anybody is nerdy like me and wants to read up on course design, please feel free. And also there's a, a link here to the SUNY online template and uh, where you can get more information about the template itself. Uh, I'm sure you've all been familiar with it as you've worked through the development process with the SUNY online team, but just for your own information, here it is. So one of the other things that uh, we kind of encourage our faculty to embrace is the idea of an inclusive classroom. And inclusive classrooms really deal with accessibility uh, issues. And so I like to put this image here of a playground that on the, the right that was designed for, uh, it's accessible, right? Uh, they say that because it has a platform that uh, you can roll a, a wheelchair up to it, then it's accessible. But the fact of the matter is a, a, a child with dis, uh, mobility issues would have trouble interacting with this playground. Instead, what we would encourage people to do in terms of a classroom and a playground is to build it with inclusivity in mind. So all of the toys here at the playground on the left are, are easily accessed by uh, anyone with a mobility issue or, or any other physical handicap or physical disability here. And so that's what we want our classrooms to, um, to, to be like. From the very start, as they're being built, 
it's built for everyone. And because it's built for somebody who has a mobility issue, then that means that somebody who doesn't have a mobility issue can still use it. That's how we want our courses built. So what we've done here is I've included a, an accessibility playlist because the Center for Professional Develop has offered a number of different programs over the last couple of years that focused on accessibility. And I'm gonna encourage all of you to view these workshops at your leisure. We have um, workshops that range from point and clicks on how to make PowerPoints more accessible, how to make Word documents more accessible, to things like the difference uh, between accessibility and accommodations and uh, conversations about ableism, et cetera. So uh, take a peek at that accessibility playlist, but also watch for announcements regarding a, an accessibility program that we're gonna launch in January. That's really gonna try to move the ball forward on, on having faculty and staff across SUNY embrace uh, the idea of inclusive documentation. Uh, one of uh, the next topic we're going to discuss is regular and sub substantive interaction. And this is going to be a phrase you're going to be hearing quite regularly um, moving forward. These are new U.S. Department of Education guidelines regarding distance education courses and instructor presence. And I've included a link to the OSCAR uh, rubric website. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with OSCAR as you're already done with the course development um, process. but on the Oscar was revised over the summer to include this RSI into the kind of the, the rubric itself into the um, I forget the words uh, the what were the <laughs> I can see the rubric but anyway what we're striving for there they've they've incorporated RSI into it. And I've also included a link here for course delivery strategies. We've done a number of, of webinars in the past couple of years that focus on you know, alternatives to lecturing, alternative assessment strategies, you know, grading techniques, and other things that you wanna do when you're delivering the course to your students. So do we have any questions before we move on to the faculty resources about RSI, about the OSCAR rubric, about uh, the template, or about, um, what was the other thing we covered, uh, or accessibility before we move on? Please feel free to unmute your mic or pop in the chat if you have any questions. No? Okay, great. Remember, you'll have access to this PowerPoint, and you'll, so you'll have all the links there. We have, uh, as part of the initiative, we have a lot of uh, SUNY online services and supports available to you. And this uh, link here, the services and supports will take you to a site which has a large number of links for you to explore regarding campus supports, community engagement, faculty uh, and professional uh, development, as well as research and innovation. If anybody's interested in that, you can certainly see how you can get involved there, as well as our student supports. We're gonna go into more depth about student supports with Larry Dugan a little bit later today, uh, but we're gonna talk some more about some of these other resources. As a part of the SUNY Online Initiative, we have access to some third-party tools and each of the campuses and the courses that are teaching these programs for us, uh, you're gonna be using Blackboard Ultra Navigation. So you might notice when you're teaching this course, even though you're accustomed to teaching in Blackboard, that you're gonna see the Blackboard Ultra Navigation that kind of overlay on top of uh, Blackboard Learn. And uh, so that's one tool that you have access to. You'll have access to Collaborate, which is a conferencing tool within Blackboard. Uh, your students will have access to Thinking Storm, which is our tutoring um, a third party vendor. And then they can, they can seek out uh, tutoring from this, um, from Thinking Storm. And it's actually been, uh, it's actually really neat. So I encourage you to, to explore Thinking Storm as well. We're shifting over to Examity uh, for proctoring this semester. I, in previous semesters, we were using HonorLock, but we're going to switch over to Examity this semester. And then you're probably all familiar after the development cycle about Ally as the accessibility tool kind of gives you a, a score. And then when you upload anything into Blackboard, you can see that 
uh, if it needs uh, you to address anything regarding accessibility, the icon will be red, yellow, or orange. And what we're really striving for is those, those green icons next to all of the content we've uploaded. We also have access to Packback, which is an artificial intelligence tool that helps with grading uh, or helps with discussion forums. It promotes better posts by the students and um, it makes, uh, you know, you can set certain levels where students have to achieve a certain score within Packback before they can post, et cetera. And I see a question here, Celine, when will the switch to Examity occur? They are working with uh, switching over right now. And so this semester we'll be dealing with Examity rather than Honor Lock. Uh, if I, so will, will there be uh, obviously some tutoring will occur or help with this, right? Because I've been using Honor Lock and I was, this is my first time teaching SUNY online and I was getting ready. Uh, in fact, I, tr I, I already put some in, in instructions and information and practice exam in honor lock. So it's gonna happen in the middle of the semester. That's gonna be quite disruptive. It should be happening sooner than later, um, but I can get some information about right. that and distribute it to you. And I, I can uh, make sure that we get a program up and running in the first couple of weeks if people want to learn more about Examity. Okay, so okay. All right, honor luck will be out then completely yep. this. Okay, all right, thank you. Yep. Uh, for SUNY Online, not necessarily FLCC. No, I understand. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, just, I didn't want to no, create no. a panic. I, I was clear about that, it, but it's still, I mean, one course or five courses. In fact, it's probably going to be worse to, to do one on honor luck and the other one in examity, but it's, it is what it is. So we'll try to deal with it. Thank you. Okay, good luck. Okay, so as a part of that, you know, if you ever have a question about Blackboard or any of those third party tools, you can reach out to the SUNY Online Support Services Help Desk. And um, they are not just for faculty, they're for students too. So we do encourage if you have any students that need assistance with their, their course, if they're having technical issues, logging in, uh, their, it's, uh, Blackboard's not playing very nicely with their um, with their computer or they're having trouble submitting something, you know, rather than try to troubleshoot that yourself, I encourage you to have your students reach out to the help desk. If you're struggling, you know, don't waste an hour trying to figure something out. Just reach out to the help desk and they can probably help you in a minute. And uh, they're, they're really great people there. I can't say it positively enough. So don't forget about this resource, use it. Um, the link to the help desk is actually provided to your students in the, the course template there on the left hand side, call attention to it, especially if there's an exam, you know, as part of my exam uh, prep uh, language, I always encourage my students to write the number down for the help desk, right, so if they have an issue while they're taking the exam, they can reach out immediately. Next, we're gonna talk about professional development uh, opportunities for you all. This is uh, my, uh, my home, the SUNY Center for Professional Development. And we have, it's a collaborative central resource for SUNY overall, but in particular, we're supporting the SUNY online initiative. You can check out the CPD website. You can check out our YouTube channel, which is just chock full of helpful videos of all our previous programming. Uh, we have a number of different programs. I'm going to kind of blow through those really quickly because I want to make sure that you have time to hear from Larry Dugan today. I do encourage you, if you're not already receiving uh, information from the CPD, that you do join our listserv. This is how we notify people uh, about the upcoming events, upcoming workshops, upcoming um, uh, conferences, etc. We try not to spam people. We really do limit what we send out, but it, and when we do send it out, it typically is pretty important. So my email is posted here. You can certainly reach out to me if you have any questions about programming. We offer at the CPD a variety of workshops. Uh, we do uh, offer these workshops for free, um, in particular the LMS training in this, in your case, Blackboard Ultra Navigation. We do lots of uh, programs or workshops on teaching technology, as well as best practices and online instruction. So I encourage you to check out these uh, playlists for the accessibility uh, best practices and then the, the Otter Institute, which just uh, finished a couple weeks ago. 
Then we have certificate programs and I'll, I'll allow you to just click through those if you're interested. This is a really great way if you're, uh, these can be used uh, in many uh, faculty members um, packets for tenure promotion. Uh, they're a great way to supplement your packet, but it's also great to learn more about DEI initiatives and, and how to better support students online. And then we support a number of conferences, and this just is just a small number of the conferences uh, that we do support. If you have time, I would encourage you to participate in the SUNY Online Summit, which runs typically in February, and CIT in particular, and in May each year. Those are geared more towards online instruction. And then how we support the uh, SUNY Online Signature, the Degrees at Scales programs, uh, is we have the SUNY Online registration site, and that will provide you with information about the different orientations, the faculty focus forums, as well as uh, include recordings from all our previous um, sessions that we've done. We'll be uh, providing more tool specific workshops on Examity, on Packback, on, on um, I'm trying to think of another one, uh, Thinking Storm, et cetera, over the course of the next year. So please check back at this registration site and you can, you can uh, sign up for them as, as well. My role is um, uh, partially funded by SUNY Online at the CPD. And so I can dedicate half of my time to supporting the SUNY Online initiative. All right, so let's talk about a community of practice. We have a community of practice that we're building and where we're building that community of practice is in Workplace. And Workplace is uh, the SUNY Learning Commons and we uh, it's powered by Facebook Workplace. Uh, and the goal of the Commons is to promote communication and collaboration across the systems. And we're gonna use this system uh, specifically for a group for SUNY online degrees at scale faculty where we'll post about upcoming events. We can post questions about scaling our courses, about uh, proctoring, anything that has to do with these particular courses, we're gonna encourage people to participate. So if you're not already on uh, Workplace, I do encourage you to join in. It's, it's not just about SUNY Online, it's anything involving uh, SUNY and you get a lot of great information that way. If you want uh, to connect, you can reach out to Kelly Williamson. She works at the Center for Professional Development with me and there's a link here in the presentation that you can click uh, to get signed up. It's a great way to communicate. We do encourage you. And then once you get signed up, I can send you an invitation to the closed group for SUNY Online Signature Degrees at Scale. Finally, I'm gonna hand us over to Larry for Larry to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, student supports that we have here with SUNY Online uh, Degrees at Scale. Larry, do you wanna share screen or are you just gonna chat? No, I'm just gonna. I don't Great. have a presentation note. No more PowerPoint for me. <laughs> um, so I recognize some names out there, some of which were my uh, colleagues that I worked with at, at uh, Finger Lakes and Monroe. And um, I don't know who Jeff is, though. Who's Is that Jeff from Brockport or Jeff from, which Jeff is that? Doesn't, say, doesn't want to say, okay, so, hi. Um, so anyway. Hi, Larry, the, uh, I'm, I'm Jeff Ritter. Jeff hi. Ritter, okay. Hi. Um, Hi, everybody. Sorry. That's okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I left. Um, so two years ago, I left Monroe Community College, where I was uh, director of online learning uh, to become the um, provost fellow for student uh, enrollment and student success um, for SUNY online. Um, probably because I had such a big mouth and I was screaming and yelling that we should be doing something like this. Um, so what my job is, uh, Marianne Hassan has a great way of saying it all the time, is that my job is to get them in their seats and keep them in their seats. Um, uh, and so the get them in their seats part you saw before with the lead nurturing funnel and the advertising and the marketing, all that stuff that I do um, to, to attract students. Um, but then I also have a team of student people that are um, basically um, concierges uh, on steroids. I think that well, I shouldn't say they're on steroids because that gives a bad connotation of what my staff is doing. Um, what, what it is basically is following the intrusive advising model. Um, and we use tools um, like Starfish, like some other tools uh, uh, to keep um, students on track. So one of the things that we know 
absolutely for sure is that um, most of the students that are not successful are not successful because um, of non-academic reasons. And uh, one of the things when I was uh, helping some, um, uh, some campuses work with uh, Starfish back in my younger days, we, we talked about all the other people that the students contact on that campus. Um, online students is particularly difficult. Um, so one of the things that we've, we've talked about and I've been talking about for years now is um, I always ask the students, so who's your person? Who's the person on your campus that you go to when you have a question? Maybe not about the, the class, but for everything else. Because, you know, we do a lot of things in higher education that are, oh, well, first of all, there are things that students will never have to do again in their life, hopefully, most of the time, right? I mean, standing in line at a financial aid office, um, the only thing I can think I could ever think of that's the same as that is having people stand in line at an employment office. And, and that's not what we want students to have to do. Uh, we're not training them for that, right? We're not, we're, we're teaching them and educating them to be um, professionals in their, their field. So um, my staff's job is basically to help the students through those things that happen on a campus um, that are um, to get them to the class. And then once they're in the class, help them with the technologies that are going to be um, used in that classroom if they need support. And let me tell you a little bit about our students. SUNY Online Degrees at Scale, or signature programs, um, is, uh, we, I marked it to primarily adults, 35 um, as the average age. The average age actually is 34.5 um, of our students that we attract, significantly different than our traditional students. Um, we spend no money in marketing in the 18 to 24 market, the 12 to 17 market that you do in traditional marketing um, for colleges. Ours are all adults. Um, most of our students haven't been in college um, for a long time. Maybe some of our master's students have, um, but it's, and it's very different from when they were in college. They were in college ever. Um, and so we're here to help them through that, that, that maze that we call higher education um, and all the, I love to call it, administrivia that happens in there. Um, our single points of contact for students stay with them from the time they start with um, their community college, they go through that whole pathway and they stay with them all the way through to when they graduate from their graduate program. So they make, they're maybe their coach for three different institutions. Um, but bottom line is it solves the problem of who's their, who's their person, who's their person at SUNY. Um, and keeping a person across multiple SUNYs is important, especially when we're doing things at scale like we're talking about. When you've got, in some cases, uh, the goal is anyway, is to have a thousand students in your program. Um, you know, some, ca some campuses are going from um, a very few students in their program in some of the cases that we have here, um, uh, hopefully up to it, probably not a thousand, but maybe 500. And that's a big shift, um, you know, for an advising department, for instance, or, or uh, a student support department on a campus to support students that are 70% from around the New York City area. Um, so they're nowhere near their campus. Um, they can't come to their campus, and um, there are adult learners that need a little different lift than their traditional age students. So that's why our student supports um, model was created the way it has been. We, um, we support the students in, um, in anything that they need for registration, um, and it's the technology behind registration. In a few cases, we actually support students in advising, depending on the campus. Um, but for the most part, we're there to help students. If they, most campuses now self-register, students have to self-register. So we help them through those technologies. We help them with Blackboard if they need help. Um, we help them um, find services like tutoring and everything else that exists that Jamie uh, talked about uh, in our, our presentation so far. Um, you'd be amazed at some of our adult learners, how terrified they are of, 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 of computers. Um, but the reality is, they have no choice. They have no choice but to take these classes online. They work um, or they're homebound, um, they're, they're, it's place sensitive or time sensitive. They, can't, they can only take classes at night and then campuses aren't doing night classes anymore so they have to take them online. Um, so many things that are different in our adult learning market than are in our traditional um, market and we're here to support those students. Um, many times our, our coaches um, that we have on our campuses, which work with a ratio of one to 75 students on a community college, up to one to 200 students at a master's level, they don't need as much help. Um, um, 
a, a lot of what they're doing is, um, you know, talking them down, right? I mean, the, the student just needs some reassurance. Um, we train our coaches in uh, some of the models of, 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 of that we've seen in some of our you know, corporate models for customer assistance. I'll, I'll call it that. I know the word customer is usually not used with students, but um, where we, uh, you know, use the three A's, um, acknowledge, align, and assure the students that were there for them to help. Um, we take all academic inquiries from students and revert them back to the faculty member. Um, and uh, basically we become their, um, Ombudsman, I guess, the, the, the student's um, support person to get them to their faculty member to ask the question. Interestingly enough, a lot of these students are terrified of talking to their faculty. Um, and so talking them into talking to their faculty sometimes is just simply what we have to do. Um, but they have to have that person. They have a person they know. And because of that, um, that model, the coaching model, and this is not something that we created this from scratch, um, we've adapted it. Um, but this was created, um, you know, University of Iowa and, and, and some of the big names in online learning have been using this model, um, basically to be the student's person. Um, I'm stressed. I don't know how to, um, I don't know how to register again. It's the middle of semester. I haven't registered. Last time I registered was in August and now it's November and I can't remember anything I've done. How do I do this? Please somebody help me, blah, blah, blah. They get all stressed out and we're like, take it easy. Understand. I hear what you're saying. You're not the only one going through this. And we talk them down um, and then get them registered and help them get registered. If we have to have the screen share and share the screen with them and talk them through it on the screen, we'll do that. Um, a lot of the stuff that we do with students are things they only have to do in higher education. They'd never have to do that again. Um, this is kind of very different, right? I've been accused of coddling students, believe it or not. Um, and um, you know, they, they're grownups, they should be able to do that. Now, we want them to be good mathematicians, we want them to be good engineers, we want them to be musicians or whatever they're taking online. Um, we're not here to make professional students, right? And yet a lot of the stuff we do in higher ed is geared toward that professional student model. Um, so um, basically, we want faculty to be able to teach these students, um, interact with the students on academic issues, and we take the lift off of the campuses for the non-academic issues um, and the, I'll call it cheerleading. Um, we also do uh, webinars for students on health, on, um, on study skills, on time management, all those things that, that we know are, are weaknesses of students. We actually do an analysis with the students, something called SAUCY, uh, the SUNY Online Student Success Inventory. When they first come in, that's gonna show the students their strengths and weaknesses about being an online student. Um, and we'll record that, go over that with the students, say, here's what you can work on to get better at this. Um, uh, so SAUCY is, uh, yeah, SAUCY, S-O-S-S-I, thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, and, uh, you know, those, those kind of things are actually things we can go through. And then when we meet with the student at the mid-semester, when they're getting ready to register for the next one, we can have the conversations with them about how did it go? How did it go with um, your challenges you said you had in the beginning with time management? What kind of skills, what kind of um, um, interventions or, or solutions did you come up with to solve that? And how can we help you get there? So um, it's an, it is intrusive advising. Um, we do know from Starfish or what the students are, are um, how often they log in and all their activities when they are logging in. We can see that in the students' activity logs. Um, we raise flags automatically based on some criteria that we have as indicators um, of successful students. Um, we know that there are some indicators that have propensity to succeed that are very high and some that are not quite as important. Um, and we will be more inter in, uh, invasive if the student is um, not showing up for class um, not coming to class, not getting work done, um, or if the faculty member asks us to. Um, you know, we may have a student that's, that this student isn't showing up, hasn't shown up. Um, when he does show up, he uses one word replies and chats and, and things. He says, can you give us a hand? We're absolutely there to help the faculty members support the students wherever we can. Um, it's no question about who's teaching the class. There's never a question about who's supporting um, the academic piece and who's the teacher. Um, Trust me when I tell you, I, I taught over the past two years, I've taught at five different campuses. I came from the faculty. Um, I know what uh, crosses the line as far as that's the faculty's job and that's the, the, the student support person's job. Um, and 
I have um, a lot of experience with that. I have faculty that, that assume right off the bat that we're going to be um, coming in and watching them teach their classes and monitoring them. We don't do that. I, I, I know better than that. I don't want people doing that to me in my classes that I've taught at three of the uh, SUNYs, I think that are on this call. Um, so um, uh, it's not that. I don't usually like to define what we do by telling you what we don't do, but um, that's the reality, right? So in, in a nutshell, in the one sentence response to what do we do in student success, we become the student's person for the non-academic issues that happen in the campus so that they can be successful and focus on what's important, which is the topics in your courses. So Larry, how, how would a faculty member get their student in touch with a coach? So they're, they're, they, the students will know their coach because they contact them with, uh, are, we're contacting them once a week. Um, okay. But if they raise a flag, if they have starfish on their campus and they raise a flag on a student, that coach will see that flag. Um, and that way those two will make the connection because the coaches will call that student. Okay. So that's the best way. If you're if you have a concern about a student, then you you raise the flag. And yeah, and it, it, if you have a problem, you're not sure about if that's the case. Um, you know, you all talked about who your contact was for SUNY Online on your campuses. Um, drop a line to them. Drop an email over to the to your contact and saying, "Hey, I'm having problems with a student. I'm not sure who their coach is. Can you connect me with them?" Um, each campus has a coordinator and a team of coaches that work with them. Um, and those people you already identified, um, you know, Katie's over at FLCC. Um, I don't know who else was here from which campuses. Most of the people from Empire were off of the, weren't faculty, I saw. Yeah, they were instructional design. Yeah, and I know you guys. So anything else I should be talking about, Jamie? Um, no, I think that was great. I think that it's, it's important for faculty in these courses to know that they have, uh, they have resources to help with the students because the students have such uh they have human lives right just like we do and and that the faculty member doesn't need to feel pressure to to help the student with that that they have they have somebody who's a professional to do that so yeah. i think it's great our it's timing a, on this was perfect we got it all in place and done just in time for covid just in time for the, the yeah. um, all the fun that all of us have had with students because we had students that we were working with that were doing it from the hospital um, trying to do their courses from the phone on the at the hospital that were either patients or nurses. Um, so it was an interesting year. But um, yep, basically it's the we've got your back, um, both sides. We've got the faculty's back if they want us to help yep. the students. So we've got the students back if they um, need help with the non-academic issues. Exactly, and and the students that report uh, back about you know their experiences with the coaches, they just say the nicest things. So if we can use that as a way to increase student retention and their success in your class, we're, we're glad to provide it. So uh, with that, I just wanna mention that we have a number of faculty focus forums coming up and you should see that announced, uh, you know, one each month, uh, we'll have one in September where we're just gonna talk in general about online teaching. We're gonna have one in October that focuses on Packback. Then we'll have another one in November where we're going to start to talk about the idea of scaling our teaching. And so what happens when we have a larger enrollment course, what that means for shifting the, the way we think about assessment and course presentation and, and lecturing, et cetera. And then uh, I think we skipped in December because everybody's going to be crazy with finals. And then we'll have another one in January. So I do encourage you to uh, participate in those. We want to hear from faculty. Uh, again, we, we make assumptions because A, we almost all of us involved have taught before, but we want to make sure that we're, we're meeting um, expectations and, and meeting your needs and we get that information through these forums. So with that, I'm going to open it up. If anybody has any questions, you can please feel free to unmute your mic and, and ask, and I'll do my best to answer them. If at the end of this, the only thing you get out of it is I can contact somebody, contact me. I can put you in touch with anybody else that you might need uh, in the event that you need help with a student or you need help with your course, et cetera. I can reach out to somebody else and have them. So just know that I'm here as a source of support. If there's anything that you need to know for professional development opportunities or suggestion, you know, please feel free to email me. I, I love hearing from people. So any questions for me?
if not, I'll, I just appreciate your time and your attention today. And I wish you the best uh, with the semester. I hope that we can uh, finish the semester the way we started and, and we'll see what happens. Uh, if not, we might be grateful that we're teaching online. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody.